I post daily in my community post and in a recent post I asked you all to send me your questions and that I will try my best to answer them in a future followed up video. This video is that future followed up video where I will basically try to answer all of your questions to the best of my ability. Feel free to use the chapters in the description of this video to quickly jump to your question or alternatively feel free and you're totally welcome to listen to all of my answers to all of the questions. Hi, I'm Mo and I'm trapped in Fallout. Question number one comes from Slow Pony Blues. Hi Mo, congratulations on reaching 5k subscribers. If you were to escape the Fallout universe, what other world would you be interested in being trapped in? For example, Elder Scrolls, Mass Effect or The Witcher. Many thanks for your question Slow Pony Blues. Uh, outside of the world of Fallout, there are a few select other games that I would love to be trapped in, I guess. Other than Fallout, there really are two other games that I play. I play a lot of Minecraft, primarily with my two sons, and the other game I play a lot of is Monster Hunter. If I had to choose to be trapped in any other game other than Fallout, it would probably have to be either Minecraft or Monster Hunter. Question number two, and this one's from The Obsidian Man. If you could pitch an idea for a Fallout game, Game to Bethesda, what would you propose? Where would it be set? What time period? Who would be the major factions be? Or rather, who would the major factions be? What kind of story would you want to tell? Okay, so this is obviously a, a super easy question, uh, so I'll try my best. Uh, first of all, thanks for your question, Obsidian Man. Now, I could probably spend an hour, maybe more, uh, answering just this one. And it's just because it's a pretty big question and there's so much to explore. But since I don't really have that time, I'll try to be as as high level as I can. Um, for an idea, I would definitely propose an offline Fallout game, uh, particularly a solo experience. Um, I think I would propose a story where your actions matter in the wider world, but at the same time your decisions would mold the world around you, but yet it wouldn't sort of revolve around you. Um, in terms of where, I would probably go with Texas or perhaps another region where we could explore more of an underwater world. Uh, for Fallout. I personally feel that an underwater world has not really been explored in Fallout. Um, it's almost always been sort of like a vast open plains like setting. In terms of time period, probably 500 years after the nukes had landed, uh, probably in a world that has a balance of law and chaos. In terms of factions, um, I think I would love to see some returning favorites such as the Brotherhood of Steel, even the Minutemen, uh, but at the same time I would also like to see a greater presence of others such as maybe the followers of the Apocalypse, uh, just give a little bit of a twist there. Uh, I would also welcome potentially some new ones, maybe a faction that is entirely run by a certain race such as maybe ghouls, maybe even an introduction of a brand new race that uh, might support the law. Um, I can dive into each one a lot more but I guess for now I'll just leave it at that for now. Question number three, and this comes from a huge body bag. <laughs> right, congrats on the 5k man. My question is, what is your favorite weapon from the Fallout universe and why? Uh, thanks for your question, huge body bag. Uh, there are a lot of weapons to choose from. Uh, I definitely know. I've, oh man, I have made so many videos on weapons alone um, and it's definitely not an easy thing to do. That said, I tend to love playing as a sneaky player or a heavy weapons user. If I absolutely had to choose, it would probably have to be Vengeance, uh, the unique Gatling laser from Fallout 3. Um, I just love the way it cuts through death claws, sort of like how a hot knife cuts through butter. Um, I remember the first time I got the weapon, it almost felt like how one would feel today if they stumbled across the, what was it called, the explosive minigun from Fallout 4. It's just a weapon that once you get it, you practically won and it feels powerful um, and getting it isn't easy either. It takes a lot of hard work to get it, uh, particularly because of how dangerous the area is, but once you get it, it feels so rewarding um, and I think it was potentially the first weapon I got that really more or less forced me to become a heavy weapons user. Uh, so that's probably my favorite weapon and, and why as well. Question number four, and it comes from Cloud Howlett. We all want to see you, Mo. Uh, do an hour live of Q&A all about being trapped in Fallout. Right. Uh, well, thank you very much for your question, Cloud. Um, in terms of live sessions, I have done some premiere videos in the past, and this is something that I think I can do again for about an hour if you all really want me to. Um, I have always wanted to compile some of my videos into perhaps one large video. Maybe maybe I can make a video where I basically show in a single video every unique weapon in Fallout 3 or, or something like that. In terms of seeing me, um, so for now, I really do want to keep the focus on my channel um, and I don't want to take any focus away from Fallout content as such. 
Um, that said, perhaps one day, maybe I can break away from my <laughs> personal shyness, so to speak, and maybe do a face reveal of some sort. Um, I think I once said that I would strongly consider it if I ever hit an impossible goal. And for me, um, an impossible goal would probably be something, you know, like sort of like in the six figure subscriber range. Um, but probably not anytime soon is what I would say. But parking that to one side, doing sessions where I'm sort of live and being able to talk to you all, that's something I think that's definitely on the table and I would definitely like to do more of that. So hopefully, uh, maybe maybe in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months, I'll do something. Um, I'll try. Question number five, and it comes from Mr. Monkey. Uh, question, would you ever venture into different Bethesda games? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much for your question, Mr. Monkey. On my channel, most likely not. Uh, I love Fallout and I created my channel with a single mantra and that was to purely create Fallout content and, and nothing else. It's basically a promise I made to myself when I created the channel that my channel would solely be focused on Fallout. Um, in particular, guides for Fallout. So not sort of uh, let's plays or, um, or theories or facts or anything like that. Purely, purely uh the whole idea behind my channel is that it eventually ends up becoming a library for anyone who wants some really quick answers to some really simple questions such as where do i get this weapon um and and you know what, what are your stats or glitches or, or things like that um and i also try to make content just for fallout and really don't want to make content for anything else um I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, my YouTube channel has been around for about a year and a half now, and this video is my second Q&A video. So other than the first Q&A video I did, and this one being the second, every other video on my channel is all about Fallout. Um, I try my absolute best not to do any update videos, anything like that. I, I keep my community best for all of that, and that's simply because I just want to make good quality content as best I can. And one of the sort of personal checklists for mine is make any content that, you know, is, is good for anyone who's watching the video or wants to watch a series of videos. And not everyone wants to really know what's happening in my boring life anyway. So I, I, I like to keep my channel purely, purely Fallout guide based. Um, but you never know, chances are probably not for now. Uh, but I might consider other Fallout games. So at the moment, I'm only looking at Fallout 3, New Vegas and 4. Um, I haven't considered Fallout 76 for now. Um, and I've got my reasons, but it's mostly because I love the solo experience and I don't really enjoy the whole online experience thing. But maybe I might I might consider covering Fallout 76 if, if people really want me to cover it. But I guess that's something for another day. Question number six, and this comes from Plumkin Live. Congrats on 5K. What Fallout game do you think has the best story and why? Also, do you plan on making contents for Fallout 76? Right, okay, so that sort of, uh, the odds of that happening. Um, Right, so first of all, again, thank you very much, uh, Plumkin Live, for your comment. Um, I really appreciate it, and, and thank you also for your question. Uh, so this is a hard one. Uh, when it comes to story, I always I always like to be able to walk different path, which leads to different conclusions. So from a pure story point of view, I think Fallout New Vegas is probably the best. Um, I like how your choices can have an effect on your current relationships and so on. At the same time, I also like the idea of self-sacrifice for clean and safe drinking water. I think um, having a moral sort of story behind things is a good thing. And as it so happens, I'm also a sucker for a twist. So I do enjoy the Fallout 4 story, although I don't really want to reveal too much for what actually happens in it for anyone that's currently playing the game. But I do like the story from Fallout 4 too. Um, but that said, if I have to, if I had to choose a personal favorite, uh, rather, if I had to choose a personal favorite, I would probably have to go with Fallout 3. And I would go with it simply for one reason, and it's probably not the best reason, but it makes sense to me. Um, Fallout 3 was the very first Fallout game that I ever played, and it left a big mark on me. Um, the story from New Vegas is awesome and Fallout 4 is good too, but personally I just love how Fallout 3 played out. At the time of playing Fallout 3, I hadn't played a sort of story like that to date uh, at the time. And uh, in terms of, you know, it just sort of really pulled me in and people tend to remember, and I think I've sort of said this before in the past at some point, people always tend to love the first time they do anything. Uh, so whatever that might be, um, Fallout 3 was the first Fallout game I ever played and it's always going to be special to me. So by proxy, it will probably be uh, my my favorite game for a lot of things. Um, in terms of making contact for, for Fallout 76, so I think I've already answered it. I'm not too sure at the moment. Um, it's certainly not a no, but also it's not a yes. Um, in, uh, in time, I may do something, but for the moment, I'm pretty busy with Fallout New Vegas 3 and 4. Question number seven, and this comes from Steve Bird. Uh, 
do you think having transport in the fallout world would be a good thing or not so much, i.e. bicycle or vehicle? Uh, well, thank you for your question, Steve. I think having vehicles can be a good thing, given the world of Fallout with creatures such as Mr. Gutsy, Sentry Bots and so on, um, and all the broken down vehicles actually when you think about it. Um, it sort of feels like the vehicles seem like they're missing from the world. Uh, likewise, I also think that Brahmins and other creatures are sort of around, so why do we not have you know other things like domesticated creatures such as horses maybe? Uh, when you think about it, horses probably would fit in quite well with the design of Fallout New Vegas, but I'm not entirely sure from a law perspective if that would be very friendly. Um, so yeah, I would like to see some form of transport in the game, but nothing where you basically end up just riding and driving everywhere. That said, I personally do think that there is a, a lovely art to not being able to always run away and being restricted to walking, and I think sometimes that can be a good thing. And when you look, so, when you sort of you know look at all the three Fallout games not being able to always get somewhere fast usually ends up being a good thing because you end up exploring things and, and learning about things. So I think, you know, having transport has its place, but probably not always. And Fallout 3, or, or rather all the Fallout games, do them quite well. Um, and I think it will probably have a decremental factor to the game design also. Um, but that's just my view. Right, question number eight, and this comes from Casper. Uh, oh, in fact, there's two questions. Do you have any hopes, uh, etc., for upcoming Fallout series from Amazon Video? Ooh. And do you know any Fallout New Vegas mods worth trying and adding something to the game? Uh, greetings from Poland. Uh, hi, Kaswa. Thanks for your question, buddy. Um, so, for the Fallout series, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, if I think about this, perhaps with a few exceptions, history, I think, has shown that adapting a video game into a TV series doesn't always work out. Um, that said, in recent time, I think it's been okay, so if I recall the Witcher series, um, they, that was pretty gold. Uh, personally, I love Fallout, so I am hopeful that it would be a series that I can really just enjoy and chill out to. Um, in terms of mods, when it comes to Fallout New Vegas, I think one of the best mods for New Vegas out there is a mod called Fallout California. It's essentially uh, an entire DLC-sized mod that is built using Fallout New Vegas game engine. Uh, so if I remember right, uh, it was developed for around six years, I think, and it's got its own story uh, with multiple endings, weapons, factions, and so on. Um, it pretty much adds a whole new game to it. That said, if you want to retain your Fallout New Vegas world instead, then I could suggest another one called Tale of Two Worlds. Uh, when using this mod, this essentially allows you to jump between Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. In other words, it almost combines the two games into a single game, allowing a single player to travel between the two worlds, share weapons, stories, and so forth. So if you're really looking to sort of spice up your Fallout New Vegas world, perhaps you, want, perhaps you might want to pull the world of Fallout 3 into your game, or have a whole new game entirely in, in the form of California. Question number nine, and this comes from Steve too. Uh, if you was on a rampage and decided to destroy every faction, what faction from which game would you start with? Okay, so, uh, okay, thanks for your question, Steve. Um, so the, this is a pretty hard question, uh, but I think the answer is pretty easy for me anyway. Um, I would probably go with the Legion from Fallout New Vegas. Um, I just don't I don't like the devastation they, they cause and, and how they leave things and you know you just need to sort of walk into towns they visited and see just how they've decimated it. Um, and I also happen to be a little bit partial to Boone and his sad story with the Legion too. I would probably start with the Legion Oh, and I also don't like paying taxes so I, I think that I would, I would use that to help uh, drive my next decision. Question number 10 and this comes from Lucy. What would you do after you have covered all the Fallout games? I'm talking about all the secrets, special items, Easter eggs, etc. Right, okay, um, so thank you very much for your question, Lucy. Uh, the honest answer is I'm not totally sure. I am currently looking at Fallout 3, New Vegas and 4, and I think it would probably take me at least a year just to cover sort of like the basic of things, uh, maybe even longer. To answer your question, I think there are other content I might want to try my hand at. Uh, so I might do maybe things like weapon comparisons or min-max guides or build guides. Um, a little bit of me is somewhat hoping that Fallout 5 comes out by the time I finish, but given that uh, the sort of guesstimated date is some, supposed to be somewhere like 2030, uh, I don't think that's going to be a thing. But, but yes, I think there are plenty of other things I can look at in the meantime. 
Question number 11 and this comes from Nuka Cola Guy. When did you first play a Fallout game and what was it and your first reaction of it? Uh, thank you for your question, Nuka Cola Guy. Uh, so this might seem like a completely made up story, but hand on heart, this is honestly true. Um, so I think I was in my early 20s when Fallout 3 came out and I basically went to my local game store about, about three or four days after the game came out. Um, and I think I just finished my shift at sort of the coffee shop I was working at at the time. Um, and I just sort of went in and I was just looking to buy any game, just anything, just to sort of uh, cover me for the weekend. Um, and I looked at the cover of Fallout 3, but I didn't realize it was a Fallout game. I just, it just looked cool at the, you know, you had like a picture of a power armor. And I thought, you know, this probably looks like a sci-fi sort of game. And I thought, you know what, I'll just give it a try. And I just bought it on pretty much a whim, not knowing that it's Fallout 3 at all. Um, so... Uh, I then got the game home um, and I remember sort of uh, firing it up on my Xbox 360 I think it was um, and I think over that weekend I ended up playing it for about 17 or 18 hours in one weekend and at the time that wasn't something that was something I would normally do I would probably play maybe at most two hours a day at most but I ended up you know playing a lot um, and that's pretty much how I got introduced to Fallout uh, or specifically Fallout 3 it was basically by accident um, at the time, I was playing a few other games. I don't recall what they were, but I don't remember playing any game other than Fallout 3 for at least a couple of months. Um, and, you know, like, uh, this is hard, but I don't know what it was that drove me into it um, or, or my first reactions exactly. But up to that point, I hadn't played a game that was so vast and so open world and it was so sort of dynamic with the dialogues. And if you did something, you had a reaction and... The reaction wasn't immediately sort of evident you would sort of see it hours later into the game or you know you basically had this whole karma system where people liked you and, and some didn't and the other way around where the bad guys didn't like you and so on and you can be as nice as you want or as, as well regretfully as as bad as you want um and the fact that you know you can sort of play a couple of hours and totally change you know the direction that you want to take as, as a character um, I think big is probably a good way to sort of explain it. Up to that point, I was playing a lot of games, but they were very much platform based or, or sort of card based um, or very, very strongly story driven based. But this whole idea of being big or, or, or I guess open worldness or freedom, that wasn't really there. It was almost always very linear. I think Fallout 3 might have been the first open world game that I played at the time. Um, and I think that's the thing that drawed me in. and. I remember quite vaguely that um, there were times where I wouldn't sort of follow the canon stories. I would just go in totally random directions, stumble across a random location, just go in there and just spend the whole sort of next hour or so just, just looking around, you know, reading terminals, um, sneaking. I even remember not always just going in headfirst and taking everything out, but sort of trying to sneak my way past things. Um, so that was probably my... well. That's how I got into Fallout, um, and, and that was probably my first reaction. Um, like I said, I didn't even realize it was, it was Fallout until you know I really got into the game and realized it'd be nice to learn a little bit more about the game, and that's when I sort of started to get into the lore, and it, it was a pretty good experience. Question number 12, and this comes from Steve Bird 2. Uh, you should try cheese and apple together, it's amazing. Okay, uh, thanks for your question, Steve. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's something that I have tried, but it sounds interesting enough to give it a try, I think. Um, I actually like apples. Uh, I try to have some pretty much every day, so maybe it's something I can easily fit in and, and I'll give it a try and then I guess I'll let you know. Question number 13, and this comes from Whitingkin. I hope I got that right. Uh, congrats on 5k. What is the next goal for your channel? Well, uh, thank you for your question, Why Dinkin, and for your comment. Uh, so that's a great question. Uh, I think having really big goals is a great thing, uh, but at the same time, I think taking small steps is a good thing too. Um, you know, I would love to see my channel hit the big 10,000 subscriber mark, and after that, perhaps one day also hit the big 25, 50, and perhaps even the 100k subscriber mark one day, um, or rather the 100,000 uh, subscriber mark. Uh, if my channel ever reaches that high, I think I would have to do something a little different. Uh, maybe maybe that might be an excuse to maybe not make a guide content for once and do something a bit I don't know different uh, but for the moment though I am really enjoying the adventure of seeing my channel grow and I just love how supportive everyone has been it's been pretty good um, I'm a bit selfish when it comes to this but any opportunity I get to say thank you I do uh, I reply to everyone's comment as best I can for all of my videos at least um, I you know it's it's been really good and I'm not entirely sure what the next goal is, um, but that's probably because I'm quite happy with, with, with how things are. But you know what? Uh, it would be pretty groundbreaking for me anyway if, if, 
if the channel ever hit that big 100,000 subscriber mark. Um, let's see, uh, baby steps. Uh, even now, I still feel like I'm still finding my feet. Let's see how things go. Question number 14, and this comes from Steve again. Uh, could an albino Razcopian with a leg missing beat a death claw with one eye and a slight lip? Well, uh, I guess that's another interesting question. Thanks, Q, Steve. Um, I would have to give it to the Rad Scorpion, I think. Um, a missing leg is probably not great, but it has other legs. And I think we all know just how devastating a limp can be <laughs> in the world of Fallout. Um, so I think I made a video on a weapon called Big Jim in Fallout 3, where if you sort of hit an enemy, uh, there's like a 20% or 30% chance, which you can stack as well, of basically breaking their leg. And if that happens, then the enemy limps. And if they limp, they basically can't move. And you can be at literally an arm's length sort of plowing away at them and they can't do anything so i think a limp is probably a pretty devastating thing that can happen to someone in the world of fallout um and i think albino ride scorpions are pretty cool as well question 15 and okay uh steve's really done a number he's asked me a lot of questions um as a creator of awesome content who, who floats your boat or earned your subscription ah okay um so again thank you steve uh so from memory um there are a few channels that I am subscribed to and for the most part I tend to trust in the algorithm gods to show me videos that I most likely am to watch. Um, I don't, uh, so although I am subscribed to channels, this one's hard to explain, although I am subscribed to channels, I don't tend to go to my subscriber tab, I tend to stay on my sort of, if you like, the, the home tab, and I uh, trust uh, the algorithm to feed me videos that eat things I like, and I, that tend to work out for me, um, but there are some channels that I do actively you know, search for and, and look at, and now there are a lot like this there's a lot but the ones that i really really like to watch or, or rather listen to are uh, mr bolton um i just love the way the dude like tells the story it's so amazing it feels like he's sitting right next to you and there's so much suspense it's, um and i just and i just like the fella he's such a like down to earth sort of person um and the other one uh, is probably infographics um i like to learn things and i like to sort of uh I just like the way they put their videos together and how they sort of convey all the information. Uh, so those are probably two channels that um, that I've been sort of checking out. Uh, Mr. Bolland, I actually subscribed to him when he hadn't hit 200 subscribers. So that's how far back uh, uh, I've been watching his channel. So uh, And infographics, again, I don't think I was an early subscriber, but um, I've been watching them for years as well. Uh, and basically channels that are similar to that. Right, question number 16. And <laughs> okay, thanks Steve for your question. Okay, uh, favorite weird food combination? Pineapple on pizza doesn't count. Uh, that is just unholy. Okay, I'm probably about to break some, some unknown law now by saying this. Uh, so, thanks for your question, Steve. Um, not sure about this one, really, but I will probably get some comments about this. I actually really like pineapple on pizza. Um, now, again, this is another funny yet true story. The very first pizza I ever had was pineapple on pizza uh, it was a hawaiian pizza um and i sort of liked it and, and i've sort of liked it ever since um in terms of my own weird food competition i don't think i can think of any but don't know if this one counts but when i go to the cinema i go quite often um i like to sort of mix my popcorn with chocolate so um like i'll have some uh they're called sort of buttons here in the uk uh you know i, I sort of mix the buttons with the popcorn and i sometimes eat the popcorn with chocolate at the same time um the reason i tend to go to the cinemas is because my kids love going to the cinemas so where they just sort of had like standard sweet popcorn or um i tend to have a little bit of chocolate with the popcorn so i don't know if mixing popcorn with chocolate is a weird thing but that's something i do right question number 17 again another one from steve uh have you played any of the witcher games if so what's your opinion uh okay uh thank you again steve for the question um i have yes uh i did enjoy the first one but i never really finished it um I never really got a chance to play any of the later entries into the series either. I'm not entirely sure, but it's a series of games that I never really got into or never had a chance to play. Uh, it's funny though, I actually have copies of all the games, um, and but I never really had a chance to actually play them. Uh, that said, I do hope to in the near future. Um, like I said, I've got them all, uh, so hopefully one day. Uh, but I, my hands appear to be a little bit busy nowadays with, with Fallout. Right, moving on. Question number 18. Uh, okay, thank you again, Steve. Um, 
have you ever looked at any of the recipes of Fola and thought, yeah, I'd probably give that a go. Okay, uh, thanks for your question. Um, so yes, actually, uh, but from a point of view of, uh, you know, virtual reality, I suppose. Uh, so in real life, something I love are omelets. I do love omelets. So if I ever get my hands on a death claw egg, I would probably not mind making myself a death claw omelet. Right, question number 19, and this is a question not from Steve, so okay. Uh, this is a question from Red Rogue, or rather Reg Rogue. Uh, what made you interested in Fallout, or like what caught your eye? Ah, okay, thanks for your question, uh, Reg Rogue. So there are so many things that are great about the Fallout world, or the Fallout games. For me, it really boils down to one core thing. I think it's the gameplay. Um, I love that I can explore an entire world on my own, uninterrupted. I love that I can virtually build any type of game avatar that I want. Uh, I like that I can roleplay as anyone, including myself, in such a harsh world setting. And I think I may be thinking a little bit too deep about this, but I do like to be able to just escape into the world of Fallout um, and just sort of fade away from reality for a bit and just immerse myself into the world. So in terms of what got me interested into the world of Fallout, as I think I probably answered earlier, it was purely accident. Um, in case if you just sort of jump to your question, um, I never knew Fallout existed until I actually bought Fallout 3 by accident. Um, and when I got it home, I just really enjoyed the game. And that's basically how I got into the world. And the thing that caught my eye in terms of Fallout is basically the whole open worldness and, and the sandboxness of it all. So that's how I got into the game. And, and that's the thing that basically hooked me uh, and, and I'm still playing today. Question number 20, and this comes from Plumpkin Live. Ah, okay. What inspired you to create a Fallout YouTube channel? Okay, uh, well, thank you for your question, Plumpkin Live. Um, something I love about Fallout is the community behind it. Uh, I've been playing Fallout literally for years now, and I basically wanted to contribute something back to the community. Um, at first, my channel sort of started out as something of a hobby almost. Um, I love creating content and I wanted to try my hand and put my own stamp on creating guides. Um, I certainly cannot compare myself to so many legends on YouTube that have been doing this for years, like literal years. Uh, but at the same time, I just wanted to make quick, clean and easy to understand guides for YouTube. Uh, like I said, there's a lot out there. Um, and when I sort of saw the videos uh, of the guides at the time, um, I thought they were great. But I also thought that maybe they can be a little bit faster and maybe not as so much, uh, basically quicker, uh, or, or, or I, I don't know how to quite put it. Um, the guys, the guides on YouTube today, they're not bad. They're, they're pretty good. Um, I would quite easily look at some of my own guides and, and sort of compare them to the guys done by sort of like these really great guys and gals and, and theirs, I think, are better. Um, but sometimes, living in the world that I live in anyway, I just want quicker answers. So the, the format of guides I wanted to create, and, I, and, and I'm still trying to sort of work out the whole formula behind it, is to create guides that are quicker um, or, or, you know, they sort of get straight to the point. No sort of, um, so, sort of not like an overload of information, but just sort of there. So the format I usually go for are, you know, um, here, this is, what, this, is the, this is the weapon I'm going to show you. This is how to get it. Um, this is what it does. And that's basically it. So, uh... Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, I also started my channel at a time where basically things were not great in my personal life. Um, Fallout has, uh, I don't know how quite to say this, but I've, I've turned to Fallout for a lot of personal therapy, if you like. Um, you know, I, I started my channel sort of during COVID time as well, and uh, I lost a few sort of very, very dear family of mine to the whole thing. Um, and one way of me coping was playing games. Uh, and then I thought, you know, why don't I create content? I like creating stuff. Before YouTube, I was creating other stuff as well. I've, I've always been a creative guy. I've sort of, you know, created websites and I like drawing and various other things. So I sort of started my channel, not from a community point of view only, but also from a self-therapy point of view. Um, and my channel, as silly as this might sound, I don't, I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but it helps me keep focus on a lot of things, um, a lot of different elements of both my family, work and more. Um, it's, it's a really strange one to explain, but the more I work on my channel, the more happier I feel in other walks of life. Um, but now my channel feels so much more than just somewhere that or, or something that allows me to be creative. Uh, I feel a deep connection to my channel and I love being able to talk to everyone. Uh, some of you may know this, but I do try to reply to every single comment in my videos. Um, it's pretty hard to do, but I quite consciously take out like about 45 minutes out every day, just, just sitting and just going through my comments and just, just basically talking to everyone. You know, it helps me to keep a center. Um, and it's a personal belief of mine, but I believe that uh, you should do what you love because it makes you happier. And thankfully, I feel 
I feel okay. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what inspired me to create my YouTube channel. It was basically um, just trying to give back something and also quite selfishly because um, it helps me to keep my centre and my focus in, in my personal life. It helps me to balance things. Um, and I have a pretty hectic life outside of YouTube. Right, question number 21, uh, which comes from Steve Bird. Uh, will you do a face reveal at 50k? Ah, um, well, thanks for your question. As said, I love creating content and I feel so lucky being able to do this. I really do. Um, but at the same time, I really, really want to keep the focus on, on the channel um, and the content and Fallout specifically. Uh, but you don't know. At the moment, I'm not working on my channel full time. Um, it's not something I can really afford to do. Got to do the day job and, and keep the lights turned on. Um, but, you know, maybe if I went full time on my channel, then I might consider it. I really would. Um, I really love Fallout. And like I said, I just want to keep the focus on Fallout, period. Um, but maybe, I don't know, doing, <laughs> I really don't want to do a face reveal and find out that other people have decided to you know, not watch my videos anymore because uh, because they came to watch Fallout and not some, let's just say, not something they probably expect. Uh, but I don't know at the moment. Let's see what happens and perhaps one day I might do something in some capacity. Question number 22 and this comes from the gaming guy or gaming guy. Can you give me a tip for Fallout 3? Okay. Um, well, uh, gaming guy, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I, I think I can. Um, so there are probably a hundred different things I can say ultimately that I think you can do. Um, but really, uh, I think that the best advice I can give you is just enjoy the game. Um, it's an amazing game. There's so much you can do and, and don't feel like you have to rush anything. So after leaving Vault 101, you know, don't feel like you have to follow the main quest line or anything like that. Basically, just take your time. Treat the game world as if it was a real world, explore and have fun. Um, don't know what other tip I can give you. I don't really want to be selfish and say, just go and check out my videos. I really don't want to do that uh, because I don't think, um, like for me personally, uh, most of my joy comes from randomly doing random stuff in the game. And the reason why I know a lot about all these different weapons and um, all these glitches and all of this stuff is purely because I just sort of explore things. Um, I don't really tend to stick to guides, uh, you know, when it comes to playing games. So that's what that's the advice I'd give you. You know, just um, just go and explore things and don't rush anything. And very soon you'll find if you're not already enjoying the game, that you're gonna probably enjoy the game. Question number twenty-three, and this comes from Condensed Milk. What's your favorite Fallout? Okay, I think I might have answered this one. Um, well, thank you very much for your question, Condensed Milk. Uh, so this is a hard question because. All the Fallout games I've played, they're all really good, but for different things. Um, and well, even with that said, I do tend to make this question easier on myself to answer for one simple reason. I, I always basically go with the game that basically introduced me to the entire franchise, uh, you know, that helped sort of born the love for it. And that was Fallout 3. Uh, Fallout 3 is my favorite Fallout game simply because it was the first Fallout game I ever played. Um, it introduced me to the world, the lore, the weapons, the playstyle, you know, the whole Fallout package. Um, but that doesn't mean it's the best Fallout game. So I am going to be a bit cheeky and dodge that question of what I think is the best Fallout game. But my personal favorite is Fallout 3. Question number 24, and this comes from Steve Bird. What's your favorite chocolate? Uh, thanks for your question, Steve. Um, so my favorite chocolate has always been Ferrero Rocher. Uh, I really like to eat chocolate. Um, I do a lot of that when I go to the cinema, although you don't get Ferrero Rocher at cinemas. Um, so I tend to sort of binge eat them during special occasions, whether it's sort of festive occasions or sort of merry occasions, whatever they happen to be. Um, I just, I love, uh, I really like to enjoy a really nice box of Ferrero Rocher when I can. Um, I'm not allowed to have a lot of chocolate in recent times because of sort of health and other, let's just say, aging issues, but uh, it's by far my favorite chocolate. Question number 25. Uh, what is one important thing you have learned from doing YouTube? And this comes from Zelius. And I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, well, thank you very much for your question, Zedius. Uh, so I've been doing YouTube, or rather I've been doing Trapped in Fallout for a year and a half. And I think the most important thing that I found is that you basically do what you love. Um, so I did look into this a lot. And uh, what I've gathered is when you have a YouTube channel, um, you basically do it one of two ways. You either do it as a hobby or something you like doing or something you enjoy doing 
or you do it sort of like a business and you, and you treat the whole thing like a business. And those are two different ways of doing YouTube. Um, and the reason I mention it is because if you do it as a business, then when it comes to sort of important thing, um, it's more about, you know, what sort of going to help you generate the bottom line. Now, I do my channel because I love doing it. And, and the thing I've learned from it, the most important thing is just being consistent and just loving what you do. Um, so uh, there was a period of time where I was posting video literally every single day and I did that for about six months. Uh, but then I stopped so I can sort of take a step back to think about the content and explore other ideas. Um, in short, I have learned that doing something you love on YouTube actually helps you to not focus on the numbers such as the subscribers, watch time, views, so on, um, but instead focus on the content and its quality. Uh, I think over time, um, the stuff that you ignore, like the numbers, they sort of take care of themselves. Uh, the bigger bonus here is that you get to meet some really cool folks as well uh, via your comments. Um, the one thing I would like to start doing more of our premieres and perhaps one day live sessions. But yeah, so I think to answer your question a little bit more directly, I think um, to, to, to have a YouTube channel and to keep it going, I think the most important thing is that you actually like or love what you do and you let your passion drive you forward and you don't really sort of care about the rest you sort of put it to a side and if you, if the passion's there and, and and the love is there and the need to do more is there of what you love doing then all this other stuff sort of automatically happens and i know that might not make a lot of sense um but it does to me like you know i um i don't know i i don't look at the numbers every day i i, I don't i on average, I actually look at my numbers maybe once every three weeks just to see how things are going. Um, you know, are, are things going good, bad? But I don't look at that for, for the use of, oh, you know, uh, why is my channel doing bad or why is my channel doing good? It's more about, you know, people seem to like this type of content more. Um, so I'll make more of this type of content because I enjoy making it and people enjoy uh, watching it. So there's no harm. And like I said, you should do what you love. And, and I love doing what I do. So yeah, so I think the most important thing for anyone doing YouTube is you need to have something driving you forward to do it. Otherwise, you just basically burn yourself out and, and that's never a good thing. And with YouTube, I think you never know, you know, you could be pushing and pushing and pushing and nothing's happening. And that next video might've been the video that really helps you to, you know, really reach out. So if you have that driving factor behind you, I think, you know, all the other stuff doesn't matter and, and you'd just be happier. Moving on, question number 26. Um, and this comes from Steve again. I, I think we've had like five or six questions from Steve. Um, have you ever crashed a car? Okay, uh, so thinking about it, yes, I have. Um, so thank you for your question, Steve. Um, I crashed a car just once, and I don't think I can even call it a crash. It was more like a a moment of, a moment of friction. Um, so this is what happened. Uh, I was learning to drive, and it was about three weeks into me learning to drive. Um, and I was in the car with my uh, learning instructor, and my learning instructor, for a brief moment, sort of uh, took out a notebook from his sort of glove compartment on the passenger side of the car. And in that moment, while he wasn't concentrating, I don't know why I did. I sort of turned the handle to the left, I think it was, and I ended up scraping uh, a tree. And he left a mark on the car. And the moment he noticed the tree, he, he hit the brakes. Um, and that wasn't a very elegant conversation to have after, but. Um, once that happened, uh, like I said, that was like three weeks into me learning to drive, uh, but that was about 13 years ago. Since then, thankfully, I've had no issues whatsoever. Uh, but no, if you can consider that as a crash, then that, that's that's the extent of my experience of crashing a car. Question number 27, and this comes from Mac S. Are you actually trapped in Fallout? Ah, uh, okay, so this is sort of like a, an open secret, I suppose. Um, first of all, thank you, Mac, for your question. I sort of am. Um, let me explain. Um, it's almost the only game franchise that I play religiously. Uh, the only other games I tend to play are Monster Hunter, and that's more of a, a break game, if you like. And the other games that I play are Minecraft, but that is because uh, my boys play Minecraft, and I just basically jump into the world with them, and, I, and you know we build things and we, we you know we, we explore and so on. Um, so in a way, I sort of am because it's virtually the only game that I really play when I really want to get into something like, you know, deep into sort of understanding things and exploring different paths. Uh, but that said, outside of Fallout, I do have a lovely family and my work too. So outside of the world of Fallout, I uh, I work in uh, the exciting world of IT um, uh, and I have my lovely wife and my two little boys. So yeah, I, I guess it's probably not the answer you were looking for. Uh, when playing games, I sort of am. Well, when I'm not playing games, I, I have a life uh, 
or rather a life outside of the world of Fallout. Question number 28. Uh, who would you rather reverse pickpocket a grenade on? Uh, Mr. House, Tempany, Crowley or Kellogg? Right. Uh, thank you for your question, Steve. Um, so I am a family man through and through. and uh, It would have to be Kellogg for that one reason. Um, I'm not going to spoil the story of Fallout 4. But as a dad in real life, um, if I had a moral... As a dad in real life, I feel like I've got a moral duty to take out Kellogg over all the others. Um, I pretty much love my boys. Uh, As far as who I love the most, my boys are pretty high up there. So um, Kellogg would probably win that uh, that competition. Question number 29, and this comes from Zero Patience. Patience, uh, will you ever escape Fallout? Uh, Thanks for your question, Zero. Um, in a way, I hope to never escape, and my channel will only ever be about Fallout. Uh, chances are, I probably won't. Um, so I sort of explain this in other questions, but if you sort of jump to your questions uh, really quickly, um, I made a promise to myself and my channel that I will only ever make Fallout content. So chances are, I probably will never escape Fallout. Um, if I ever did, then I don't know. Maybe I might escape into the world of something else, but that would be a totally different thing, and it wouldn't affect Trapped in Fallout at all. Question number 30, and this comes from Steve. Probably the 8 or the 9 question now, I think. But Steve, thank you very much for giving me plenty of stuff to think about. Um, Okay, are you an indoor or outdoor person? Okay, uh, so thank you, Steve. Um, I'm actually a little bit of both. Uh, So like I said, I work in IT. um, So outside of YouTube, uh, that's basically what I do. So um, as part of my IT job, I don't want to say too much because it's pretty boring. But... um, I do uh, I do a lot of programming, um, I do a lot of coding, uh, I do a lot of graphics, uh, I work on a lot of websites, uh, I, look, I work on a lot, a lot of servers and various other things. Um, and I've loved doing that sort of stuff for a very long time now. I've done it for the best part of, I think, 15, 16 years. Um, so when I'm really sort of into it, it's so easy for me to just sit down on my computer and not really realize what the time is and I can just, you know, I can, I can sit and program all day. Um, but at the same time, I, I like doing outdoor stuff. So when I'm not at my computer and I'm with my family, it's quite rare we'd sort of stay indoors. What we tend to do is go out on walks, whether it's parks or, or just you know, jump into the car, go to a theme park. Um, so basically, uh, when I'm on my own, I like to be indoors. But when I'm with families, I'm almost always outdoors. Question number 31. Uh, are you any good at Catan? And this comes from Steve. Uh, so thank you for your question, Steve. Uh, I love Catan. Uh, when the extended family comes over, so that's like, you know, like my sisters, my brother, um, it's really easy for us to break up the board and just have a couple of games. Um, I consider myself a pretty good Catan player. Uh, I do win most games, but uh, I also like losing. Uh, and that's because sometimes I just like to stir up a little bit of drama uh, amongst the siblings. So losing the games sometimes is just as fun as winning. Um, but yeah, I am I think I'm good at Catan. Right, question number 32. And um, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video. Um, all of these questions that I'm answering are purely ad hoc. Uh, I'm not reading off a script or anything like that. So as I'm looking at the questions, the names are sort of popping up. So right, question number 32 is from Steve also. Uh, as a big city dweller, who do you support? Uh, Sport-wise, not the good or uh, good lady uh, and little ones. Okay, so I think I think that means um, nothing that my missus or my kids support. Um, okay, so again, thanks for your question, Steve. Um, I actually grew up in a city. Uh, I actually grew up in London, uh, in the UK, um, but about 14, yeah, around 14 years ago, I actually moved out to a more suburban area. So in terms of sports, uh, I tend to, uh, when it comes to sport, I sort of support football, I guess, here in the UK. Um, but in terms of sport specifically, I don't really support any team, uh, not like that. Uh, the, the only real time I sort of get into football is during the World Cup, and that's basically it. So uh, I'm not a very sport sort of guy, if, you, if that makes sense. Um, but I do love watching the World Cup. Um, I love how it sort of brings, you know, a lot of my friends and family together. Um, it's pretty cool. Okay, question number 33. Uh, again, from Steve. Okay, uh, so which clown would you like to make run the gauntlet? Pennywise, Krusty, Ronald, McDonald, or uh, Logan Paul? Um, <laughs> okay, I don't know. This almost feels like a trick question now. Um, so thanks, Steve. Uh, I guess if I were to try and back a clown in 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 the hope that he would win, then I think it would have to go with Pennywise. Um, and I think anyone running the gauntlet would probably would run it with the view of trying to win it. Um, so I would put my bet on Pennywise and and not the others. Um, probably not the answer you wanted from me, but but I'll stick with Pennywise. Um, you can't go wrong with Pennywise. 
Okay, question number 34a is someone different. Uh, so this one comes from Tr Trash Boat. What made you want to do YouTube? Okay, thanks for your question, Trash Boat. Uh, so this might sound a little, little cheesy, uh, but I always wanted to make guys because I just wanted to give something back and because I wanted to share my love for Fallout and because I use my channel as, as a way of dealing with sort of life and work and family and various other things. Um, I love Fallout 3, uh, so I started my channel with Fallout 3. Um, if you have a look, I actually started my videos as a sort of a parody of, of me being trapped in the game. So uh, so I don't know if people have sort of checked out my very first video. Um, I decided not to make them private. Uh, if you check out my very, very, very first video that I, uh, that's on my channel, that's actually, that actually is my first video on my channel. Um, and I haven't made it private because I like to be able to uh, watch that video from time to time. My channel that just started out as literally Mo, as in me, being trapped in the game and trying to find a way out. And it was quite elaborate. Uh, like I came up with a story saying something like um, I, I slept in my real world bed once and then I woke up in the game and every time I go to bed I woke up in a brand new section of the world or something like that. Um, but then uh, I basically did a little bit of a pivot and I wanted to make guides instead uh, because I felt that I could do a better job making guides and that's basically what I've been doing since. So um, I wanted to do YouTube for those reasons and I started with one concept and that slightly pivoted into what we see today. Question number 35, and this comes from Steve too. Uh, okay, easy one. Cats or dogs? Okay, thanks Steve. Um, I will have to go with dogs. Uh, cats are good. Uh, my sister has cats and they are a blessing with her and her kids and her husband. Um, but me, I prefer a little bit of a chaos in the house. Uh, and I think dogs, dogs would probably be better at that. Um, that said, I don't actually have a dog uh, and I've never had one. But uh, and similarly, I've also never had a cat, actually, now that I think about it. Um, but if it was something I could do, I will probably favour having a dog. Um, <laughs> I'd have a dog meet any day. Right. Um, ah, okay, and that's it. That is the end of all the questions. Wow, 35 questions. Um, right, so that's pretty much it. That's all the questions. Uh, I have tried my best to answer all your questions as much as I possibly can. Like I said, I promise this isn't scripted. This is me just reading the question and answering them as best I can. Um, if you notice in my videos, I don't say a lot of ums, ums. I don't sort of stutter or anything. Uh, so this was not scripted at all. Um, and I guess... I'll use this opportunity to just say thank you to everyone who has supported me to get this far and a thank you to everyone who has asked a question. I started my channel just under a year and a half or a year and five months um, and it's been an amazing journey. Uh, before closing off, uh, I also do want to say a quick thank you to the few you see on the screen now um, who did not leave a question but they did leave a comment and I think it's always nice to say thank you. Before logging off, um, if you want to, why not click on the video you see on the screen now? Uh, like I said uh, at some point in this video, that this particular Q&A video is the second Q&A that I've done, but I actually have done a, a Q&A one, if you like. And I remember doing that when I just hit a thousand subscribers or when I was just about to hit a thousand subscribers, something along that line. So if you do want to check that video, by all means click on it. Um, it has, I think for the most part, different sets of questions and answers on there as well. Uh, but with that said, thank you very much. And I guess I'll see you in my next video.